Here we want to find the volume of a cylinder and label the units. We want to remember to use the pi symbol on our calculators and round to the nearest hundredths. So a cylinder is basically two circles that is attached by a set of parallel lines. Notice that the formula for volume is very similar to the area of a circle because we still have pi r squared. And then because it's a cylinder, we just want to account for the height. Now remember, if you're given the diameter, which is a line that goes from one end of a circle to the other, like the one given, then we can find the radius by dividing by 2. So I'm going to take the diameter, which is 18, and divide by 2 to find radius. So radius is actually 9 inches. And then I want to identify the height, which is 5. So using my formula, I'm going to say volume is equal to pi. Remember, it's just a math symbol. Radius, which is 9. And then the radius is squared. And then multiply by the height, which is 5. Now I'm going to go to a gra uh, Desmos calculator so I can show you how to put in the numbers and round appropriately. Okay, so I'm going to take the pi symbol, I'm going to multiply, and then in parentheses, I'm going to say 9, a to the uh, power of 2, actually takes whatever number and raises it to a second power, close parentheses, and then multiply by 5, because the scientific calculator knows order of operations. So my answer for volume is going to be 1,272.345 dot dot dot. Now the instruction said to round to the nearest hundredths. Remember hundredths is a second number after the decimal point. So because you're rounding to that second number, you need to look at that third number and decide whether you're going to go up or stay the same. Because that third number is 5, then that means I need to round up. So my rounded answer is going to be 1,272.35. And if I want to label my units, depending on what the instructions say, because we're dealing with volume, I'm going to take the units and cube it. Now we want to find the volume of a sphere. A sphere is basically a ball. So you want to find out how much you can fit into this ball, whether it be air or material. So our formula has a fraction, but that's okay. All you need is the radius. So the radius here, we're given the diameter because we're given a line that goes from one end to the other end of the circle. So if you're given the diameter, you can just divide by two to find a radius. So radius is three. And now I'm gonna use my calculator. Four thirds is just the number. Pi is just the math symbol. Radius is three. So if the radius is three, then the formula says to cube three. And now I'm gonna put all this into my calculator. Now, because you have a fraction, you have to be careful on how you put the fraction into your calculator. So I'm gonna to go to the Desmos calculator once again. You can also use your regular calculator if you have a scientific. Okay, and I'm gonna take four thirds and I'm gonna put that in parentheses. So four divided by three, so that my fraction is visible, times pi, and then times, I'm gonna put in parentheses again, three to the third power. So I'm gonna write this, I'm gonna click on A to the B power so I can pick whatever number I want to be in the exponents. And then 
close parentheses, my answer is going to be 113.097 dot dot dot. Now remember we want to the round, we want to round to the nearest hundredths. So we want to round to that second number after the decimal point, but we need to look at that third number to decide whether to round up or stay the same. Because that third number is larger than five, I need to round up. Now, if I round nine up by one, that actually becomes 10. So volume is gonna equal 113.10 for 10. And then label your units. We are using centimeters. Because we have volume, it's gonna be cubed.